Hello, welcome to the second second episode of After Alexander the Great. What we had the first episode, we fought this battle of media. We won as the Macedonians that were trying to crush the revolt by the Greeks. And now we're playing uh, the other side, it seems. I have even never actually tried this battle, so it should be quite interesting. There are rebels involved here as well, it seems. So we're playing as the Greeks here. Who actually rebel against the Macedonian uh, domination and it's this ripple effect same with media ripple effect of the death of Alexander the Great so we're still uh, dealing with the consequences so what is happening here is basically the Greeks deciding it's about autumn now autumn late summer autumn 323 BC so this is our forces we're going to command they are massive absolutely massive we have this um, uh, rebel army uh, supporting us I suppose this is yes Thessalian cavalry and we are against this puny force led by Antipatros who was commander Macedonian commander in Europe this was his title after the death of Alexander so we are leading the revolt against Macedonian uh, domination in Europe and we will see how we're going to fare here so basically what happens here you have Athens that try to contest now uh, contest Macedonian domination after the death of Alexander all Most of the Greeks join in you have Aetolians, Locris, Phocis, Thessaly, Thessaly last minute persuaded to join in as well Then you have marginal uh, peripheral people such as uh, Illyrians and you hear of Thracians also jumping in at the opportunity They all join in they have a force of about 25,000 men now roughly Antipatras here, our uh, commander in Europe, he's overconfident, he's awaiting for the reinforcement from Asia as well, doesn't act too quickly and when he does, it's autumn now, he cannot wait any longer, all of the Greece is in, up, in the uprising, this is actually known, this, this, this war in general, as a Lamian war or Hellenic war, and uh, entire Greece in, is in the uprising, he needs to act, so he takes this about 13,000 men he has with him marches down south from Pella and he foolishly enough uh, decides to give the battle in the plains he has obviously lost Thessalian allies to the Greeks so he's got a massive disadvantage in terms of missile troops and in terms of cavalry he decides to go and give the battle near the Thermopylae and give the battle in the plains anyway so this is what we're going to try and do now, try to f defeat him as he was historically defeated and see how that's going to go. So let's have a quick look and see if we're going to manage. Right, so here we are. This is our force. Uh, this is this is our allies. I think this is this Eleutheroi um, rebel allies. I'm not sure what, they, what kind of forces they're supposed to represent apart from uh, Thessalians. Because there was also involved a contingent of 8,000 mercenaries that were dispatched, expelled by Alexandros after his return from uh, India. And what Antipatros' delay allowed Athenians to do is to uh, recruit this force. But I think they might be actually represented... Oh no, none of them have any experience. So yeah, they were veterans of the Alexandros campaigns and none of them have none of this... Oh no, there's one here. One here. Perhaps these are the 8,000 because... They, I do not think they were the lightly armed troop apart from the, uh, this cavalry, obviously. So yeah, we hear of the Athenians uh, hiring them. They were hired and they were quite instrumental. Boeotians rose in a revolt opposing to this uprising in support of the Macedonians. They were the only power in Greece that sided with the Antipatros against the Athenians. But they were not particularly successful because they were overwhelmed when they were trying to stop uh, the advance of this coalition force they were basically overwhelmed and defeated so Antipatros here is basically stands on his own now with his 13,000 or so of the Macedonians and tries to create to you know uh, create you know a miracles of sorts so to speak because you know 13,000 fielding them in the plains against the you know infantry and uh, the force that has advantages in cavalry not the most prudent of the moves obviously so this battle for for us as a player that should be really really straightforward relatively straightforward so we shall see okay who is this oh is this our commander yes this must be the commander of our forces let's just attack let's attack this force here 
So yeah, Athenians actually declared uh, general mobili mobilization at this uh, stage. They made a massive effort. They declared mobilization of everyone under the age of 40. They started the construction of the fleet. They were quite successful during these earlier stages of the of the revolt. So yeah, this is big, big trouble for Macedonian hegemony in Greece. All right, let's bring these troops here as well to support. But we have a massive advantage in numbers here, so I'm not particularly concerned. Uh, let's just let's flank this force here as well. And perhaps I could actually... Yes. This guy's already engaged. So are this. And we have these rebels that are on our side that are doing some sort of nonsense moves. Not sure. Okay. Is this Antipatros? Yes, he actually retreated as his troops were massacred and he was hiding in a temple in Lamia here and that's what his uh, yeah decision was then to just wait for the reinforcement that were supposed to have arrived from Europe and this what saved the Macedonians in the end this Lamian war would come to an end eventually all right so we managed to actually sorry who did I just command no we don't want you to come here we want you to stay where you are Okay, so yes, this eventually led to the Macedonians, uh, you know, succeeding this in this war. Next, the following year, they managed to defeat the Athenian fleet at sea, and the newly built Athenian uh, fleet, and the Athenians, all oh, right, and their allies, they were not successful in, uh, you know, storming Lamia, where Antipatros was hiding. And that sealed the fate because they were not successful and Macedonians managed to bring the troops. I'm a bit concerned, uh, not concerned, sorry, confused. These, these guys are really, really confusing me. I do not know. Try to click on them and I can't. <laughs> Alright, interesting. Okay. Alright, so here we are. We are doing good job, I think, here. Yes, we mostly, yeah, uh, we are surrounding the Greeks, uh, sorry, the Macedonians this time on all fronts, it would seem. Yes, yes. Historically speaking, we are doing, uh, you know, what we should be doing. We have a massive, massive advantage in numbers, and we're using it to our advantage, obviously. All right, but I'm very confused by the fact. All right, is that Antipatros? Yeah, let's let him flee. Let him flee. He should survive, and he would be instrumental in actually winning this war. Uh, the following year. Uh, yes. So this war was known. I, as a Hellenic war or as a um, Lamian war because of the city uh, which uh, served as a refuge uh, for Antipatros and his Antipatros and his uh, remains of his forces and then we have but actually this is uh, you know eventually the Macedonians do prevail however short-term effect of this war is that Argos and Corinthos Corinth also joined the rebels after the successes, immediate successes of the Athenians and their allies here against the Macedonians. So big, big problem, massive revolt on their hands. And yeah, something needs to be done about it. They will eventually, you know, bring enough force to bear upon the rebels and succeed. But that would take, is this our allies? Yes, this is our allies. Okay, so the allies, yes, might be the commander of this 8,000 of the Macedonian veterans, I suppose. I'm not exactly sure. They don't look like, like I said, they don't look like uh, Macedonian veterans to me. Uh, these troops, they're mostly cavalry, uh, Thessalian, and the light, light skirmishes, I think. Okay, so who else is still keep standing? Why is the battle still not finished? Oh, there you go. Okay, so look at the advantage we uh, enjoyed. Almost three and a half thousand men, almost against you know 1600. So we destroyed 82% of their troops and only sustained 9% of the casualties here. Let's have a look. None of our men they got any experience. So thank you so much for watching this. The next battle will be yet another episode, yet another battle of the. It's in the original. It's called the. Uh, events after Alexandros in the EB mod. I renamed it into. Uh, uh, after Alexander the Great so to make it a little bit more user-friendly you know so here we are
Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this historical content and I will see you in the next battle.